Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. And welcome back, everybody. One of the most important things you can do for yourself in life to move your life forward, no matter what gets in your way, is developing this thing that we call resilience. Helps you bounce back from challenging situations, gives you the power to power through. And we're going to talk about developing that with somebody who has had to develop that resilience through lots of changes in her life. And now she shares that knowledge with others through coaching and helps you move your life forward through her practice called New Decisions for Life. Brenda Bryson joins us here on the program. How are you doing today? I am doing wonderful today. How are you doing, Steve? Fantastic. And I'm, I'm loving that we're talking about this because it was a resilience was a game changer for me. And once you realize that you got a little something going on there with resilience, it, it changes pretty much everything uh, in giving you faith in yourself. How do you define resilience? Why don't we start there? Well, the ability to uh, navigate different things that come up in life, different challenges that come in life, come up in life when things aren't just uh, rosy, mm-hmm. uh, sunshine and rainbows, uh, anything that sort of comes up and um, triggers your nervous system mm-hmm. in some way, shape, or form, uh, and being able to navigate through that. That's, that's what I consider to be resilience. Would you align with this statement? And this is how... Just, I guess I stumbled on the fact that, oh, I'm, I now have some really solid resilience in, in saying that nothing surprises me anymore. And I don't mean that in a negative, but it's like, meh, whereby prior, you know, I would look at something and it could be a minor thing and, and kind of freak, like, oh my gosh, like, what am I going to do? Ah, what if this? What if that? What if that? Now it's just like, all right, yeah, we'll just on, on to the next, moving through it, you know, keep, keep like Dory says in, in Finding Nemo, just keep swimming, <laughs> just keep swimming. <laughs> exactly. W- would you say exactly. that it kind of aligns with you and, and your philosophy on resilience? Yeah, absolutely. I think, I think we have to be prepared for anything that can come up in life, and the more that we can build resilience, uh, the more we can just be totally okay with whatever comes our way. Not, not to say that it's necessarily always going to be smooth sailing or easy to navigate. Um, I, I think it, a lot of it has to do with knowing that you actually have the capacity to, to get through something. Like we, we all innately have that capacity within ourselves to be able to get through things. And sometimes we just forget that we have that available to us and and so that's where i really like to to help people connect with um their ability to to navigate through those kinds of situations Mm. tell me about your story how did you get to this point where you're helping others move their life forward yeah well i i went through a series of uh really big challenges in my life honestly um my Mom passed away when I was six. Um, she died of cancer. And I grew up with deaf parents and uh, had a lot of, just a lot of loss in my life, um, a lot of really difficult things happening. And um, went through that and, and really thought that I was okay. Um, like, I knew it was difficult, but I still thought that I was okay getting through, uh, and then I was in a long-term relationship, marriage, 26 years we were together, and when that fell apart, um, then everything came up, everything that, that, uh, I didn't know that I hadn't dealt with or didn't really have the resilience to, to navigate all came up, Mm. and I, I got a lot of support through that, um, with people around me, different coaches, therapists, you know, all kinds of things. And um, that, that was really what, what brought me to this point of assisting other people because um, I didn't realize that I actually had the resilience, that I had the ability to navigate through. And, and I, I thought it would 
not that I thought it would be like totally easy, but I thought, oh, I've got this. I've gone through a lot of really challenging things in my life, and I can get through this really well. Um, and yeah, it comes down to resilience and self-responsibility. So looking at, okay, how did I contribute to this dynamic, to the situation, and where do I need to grow through this? Um, and it, instead of it being something that totally knocked me down and took me out, it actually became a springboard for me to assist other people and develop a different part of my life and start really tapping into um, a life that I truly, truly love. Uh, I, I did enjoy being married and having my family and all of that as well. Um, but this just brought me into a deeper understanding of myself. Mm -hmm. And so I, through that, then I help other people be able to connect with that for themselves too and really um, tap into their true selves and, and their own resilience and their ability to, to navigate through uh, different things that come up in life. Do you feel that many times this stuff comes up, the... Yeah, the, the discovery of I need resilience. I thought I had it because of a major event. Mm -hmm. Say that again. Ask me that again. Yeah. So do you feel that many times you, you got to develop the resilience uh, or the discovery of not having what you thought you had in terms of resilience? It usually or can very often uh, come up when there's a major event in your yeah. life. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Um, I, I think that that's really where the rubber hits the road and, and we discover how much resilience we do or do not have or, uh, like, need help to be able to access that. Um, and what I've learned is that it's actually we need to build our own resilience um, on a day-to-day -day basis so that we have the capacity to be able to, to handle life's events and challenges that come our way. Hmm. Um, yeah, that's, that's a really big thing um, because we give so much to other people that, uh, yeah, it's, it just becomes challenging to, to be able to navigate those kinds of situations that, that come up in life um, without some kind of additional support and, and uh, guidance. Yeah. Um, yeah. my reason I asked that question is that's how I discovered it on my side, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and, and I think, and I'd love your, 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 your input on it, that when those things happen, you, you realize, well, I thought life was this, but maybe it really wasn't all this. Mm. And mm -hmm. there, because I really wasn't truly connected with myself and exactly to what you just said, Brenda, in that we just keep giving to others that we haven't really put the, the mirror on us. And, mm -hmm. and that's where the, there's an aha moment, like um, a long-term relationship ends and not to say that yeah, it was okay. It was good. No problem. But then you realize maybe it could be better <laughs> at that point. Yeah. 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 Or yeah. And you also learn so much about yourself For through sure. it as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I love the fact that you offer, uh, as one of the services, conscious uncoupling coaching. Now, that term, mm -hmm. conscious uncoupling, came about, uh, I don't know, maybe 15 or so years ago. Gwyneth Paltrow, I believe it was, used that term um, when she was ending her marriage. And, you know, some people looked at it like, well, just say you're getting divorced. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but it's kind of a, a nice way to say we're, we're working on moving in a different direction, but it doesn't matter whether it's a horrible divorce, a conscious uncoupling, uh, dissolving a marriage, whatever it is. My belief is you, you need coaching. You just, you can't go alone without it. It's you, you just need it. <laughs> I yeah. just, I really believe it. Well, and what, what's interesting with that, when, when Gwyneth Paltrow and um, her former husband... Yeah, I think, that was Chris, that, I think that was Chris Martin from Coldplay. But Chris I Martin, okay, yeah. Cool. Chris Martin, yeah, Chris Martin. 
when when they shared that term, it was actually created um, by Catherine Woodward Thomas, who I did my training through. Oh wow! Um, she, yeah, she's the one that that created the concept of conscious uncoupling, and uh, and I remember talk of it at the time, and um, it's it's really like a better way to to break up, and it mostly applies to romantic relationships, but it can apply to any kind of relationship because there's there's always things that happen in life where you think it was going to be one way, you think it was going to go keep going along in this particular manner, um, and then it doesn't, and it's like, okay, what now? How do, how do I approach this? What do I do? And there's a lot of, like, anger that can come up and resentment and blaming the other person, and um, sometimes it it temporarily feels better to say, oh, yeah, it was that person's fault, and they did this, and they did that, and all that kind of stuff. But really, when you're in that place, then that's not bringing you forward in life. Mm. Uh, And and it's it's actually giving away your power to the other person, um, that they, they actually have so much ownership over your life that they can cause you uh, so much pain and distress, right? And so with conscious uncoupling, we take it back to looking at our own selves and, and where, where were we in it? Like where did, where did we just give away so much of ourselves to, to uh, the partnership or to the other person and, and not take proper care of ourselves mm. or not nourish ourselves and, and that sorts of those sorts of things, um, like where where did that all happen, and and how can you be really aware of the things that you're doing, and how those things are going to impact other people? Um, because let's face it, like everybody in your life is affected when you're together in a particular relationship, marriage, or you know, let's say it's a business relationship or anything like that. Uh, and everybody in your life is affected by the dissolving of that as well. And so why not go through it in a really aware way um, to to make the impact um, as best as possible for yourselves and for everybody else whose lives it, it affects. Sure. And, and especially yeah. kids. And you know, it, it takes two. So it's never one person did all of this, it, but, but there are many times where the scale is lopsided, where somebody has done some things that um, really, really wasn't the best for the marriage or continues. But uh, again, it gets right back to, you know, that, that coaching. Um, yeah. Do you think, now your mom passed away when you were very young, right? Yeah. Do you think that as you piloted through life, that affected you, but you didn't realize it? The, the full effect that it might have had on you? Totally, yeah, yeah. Ab- absolutely. Yeah. yeah, when something like that happens, all the adults around were always like, oh my gosh, that happened, and I'm so sorry to hear, and how did you manage that? And and you just you just do. Like, you just do what you have to do to get through and, uh, and navigate life that way. And then, yeah, it wasn't until, really, for me, until my marriage dissolved that I, I realized, wow, like, this is another loss. And they say, like, any kind of large loss can then trigger any other loss that you've experienced mm. in life, right? It, it just brings it all back up. And, uh, yeah, it was at that point that I realized I, I really hadn't fully grieved um, the loss of my mother at such a young age. And, um, yeah, it, it, it definitely affected. It definitely affected sure. me. Sure. Yeah. yeah. And it's, um, yeah, it's a great point. And uh, I'm, I'm guessing we're referring to your subconscious where the stuff just sits there, especially from your childhood. And then, you know, the loss is a loss. It could be. You know, it could have been a loss of a parent much younger. And, you know, side note, my dad passed when I was 21. Didn't have a close, okay. super close relationship with him. But mm-hmm. I I believe that it's floating out there and I haven't fully resolved it. Um, mm. But I've worked on it. And uh, I did a retreat back in 
Uh, I'm going to share this and laser it. I did a retreat back in March. And one of the things they said, and it was random, that you need to, uh, and it was for men, you need to honor your father and take the lessons you learned, whether you like them or not, just em- embrace that. And I thought for a moment, I was like, yeah, you know, okay. There was some things that I took away. Also, yeah, I realized I'm him and never thought I would ever be, be him. Not a bad thing, but I was just like, wow, I'm him. Um, <laughs> and the aha moment came on the last day of the, of the retreat where, and again, <clears throat> all of the, you know, the memories and the dates and things, I just kind of buried in my mind. But I realized that the last day of the, <laughs> of the retreat would have been his birthday. Wow. So it was almost validation, call it from the universe, of like, yeah, okay, yeah, you're on a path, and it's a, it's a good one in terms of um, resolving and understanding. Um, but again, you know, this is what they call the work, and yeah. you, you can't do that journey a- alone. Tell me about mental fitness coaching. How do, how do you define that? What is that? Yeah, um, so it, it's interesting that you bring that up, um, and thank you so much for sharing your story around doing the retreat. And, oh, and thank you and ha- for sharing your yeah. life story. Yeah, you're welcome. Um, just sharing that experience, like as much as, regardless of whatever kind of relationship we we may have with our parents, um, their their DNA is still part of us, right? Yeah. So they're we're we're a part of them regardless. Um, to whatever degree. So Brenda, I'm living his life now. Are you? I am. And I always really? knew I always knew that I had an affinity for the water and things like that. That that goes way back and I didn't realize until after he passed. Um yeah. but you know, without getting into detail, it I am. And it's almost kind of crazy and it's not a bad thing. It's just a for me an interesting thing how wow. how life works and how our journeys are. Yeah, yeah, and to have that connection yeah. um, with the last day of the retreat, too, that mm. it, that does bring me down a, a little bit of a different path of something I want to share, and then I'll go back to the to the mental fitness question. Sure. Um, when you shared about that with the, the last day being um, his birthday, well, I actually had an opportunity that came up to me to go to South Africa, and I was going to be there during the anniversary of when my mom passed away. Wow. And, uh, yeah, and and it was actually, like, the 40th anniversary of when my mom passed away. And so it was just so profound, and it was actually what wow. ended up leading me on this journey um, is having that experience. And then on the actual day of the anniversary of when she passed, uh, we were going to village schools and planting trees. Um, and so I planted a tree in her honor at the village school, and it was just such a surreal experience. And so sometimes those kinds of things mm. come to us. Well, um, well, I'm going to say this, and I, yeah. I, I love your feedback on this. Things don't just happen by coincidence. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, for that to, to happen, like there's a whole, there's a whole uh, journey around... Um, that trip as well. Mm. Um, I, I wrote a little bit about it. I, I've co-authored um, a couple of books, Transforming Pain into Purpose is the title of the books. And um, so in the, in the first edition, I share a little bit about that journey and going to South Africa and that sort of thing. Um, but wow. yeah, it was, it was just that, that in itself um, was so profound for me and made me realize uh, that things really don't happen by coincidence. And, and even us having this conversation, so I'll tie it back to yeah. the conversation where we started with resilience and, and mental fitness. So mental fitness is really taking those um, moments, taking moments throughout your day to be, pre- be really present and be really aware uh, and connect to yourself and that helps build the resilience that is needed for all kinds of things that happen in our day um, and in our lives, really. And so that, that's what mental fitness is about. So it's building up your um, mental muscles in order to be able to, to navigate the different things that, that come through in life. 
uh, and just noticing and taking things from a different perspective. And there's actually an app that goes with that program um, where you can practice your, your mental fitness each day and there's different trainings that go along with it and um, there's saboteurs um, that we talk about in mental fitness as well and the saboteurs are like really well-meaning aspects of our personality that we've developed over time that think that they're there to support us but in many ways that they can hinder us as well. Mm. And so it's, it's having an awareness of those and, and uh, taking a look and, and connecting back to ourselves and having some mindfulness um, through all of it as well. Isn't it amazing that just taking time to think can be a game changer? If you do it on a regular basis, I mean, literally five minutes, whatever you want to call it, um, mm -hmm. meditation, well, just taking the time. But it, it changes your perspective. You get clarity, even if you wake up first thing in the morning and just take five minutes and just think. Don't grab your phone. <laughs> just, yeah. just think. <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not easy. But after a while, yeah. I find that I, I look forward to it. I look forward to it. Um, but life is crazy, so you gotta you got to really you know, focus on taking five minutes to just think about life. Um, even set an intention for, you know, okay, give me some insight on what today should be like. What What's going mm -hmm. on here today? Um, mm -hmm. I, I think that's all part of it. And it's so simple, but it, I, I think, it, right? Yeah, it really is. It really is so simple. And we overcomplicate things. Uh, like, what did we do before we had these phones available at uh, our bedside table, right? Um, people yeah, sat on the porch and did nothing. And, exactly. And, and I look exactly. at that like, we're well, lazy. <laughs> like, what are you doing? <laughs> and now I look at it as like, oh, how wonderful. I can't wait. Oh, I can't wait to go home and do nothing and just think. Um, I think yeah. it's just so easy. Just like when they say uh, breathing, take deep breaths. And, and it's mm. scientifically proven to reset your body. But we look at it and say, really? I'm breathing anyway. Yeah, what is that going to do for me? Come on, stop all that. Um, but it does make a difference. And by the way, of three things that my father instilled in me, yeah. one of them was breathe. Mm. Because I, I was an anxious child. And, okay. um, and uh, you know, he wasn't really, you know, like, I didn't think like a deep, deeper thinker. But he said that. Mm. And I never forgot that. And also read. Learn how to read. read. Yeah. And also, because he was kind of a ladies' man, so learn how to dance. I haven't mastered that yet. But anyway. Um, <laughs> That's something that I continue to work on as well. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That, it, it's just so interesting that we're talking about this, too, because I, uh, I actually did a breathwork session oh, wow. last night, like a, an online breathwork session. And um, and I was telling people, oh, yeah, I did a, a breathwork session. And like, what is that? Like, what the heck is breathwork? Like, mm -hmm. that, we just breathe on a, a, a regular basis. And um, we do it so automatically, we don't think about it. Yep. And yeah, when we're going through anxious times and, and that sort of thing, then our breath gets really dysregulated. And yeah. so, so breathing, like that was just such brilliant advice that your dad gave you to, <laughs> to breathe yeah. because it's, yeah, it's but so important. It didn't show up for me in my memory until I really needed it. You know, when you're okay. younger, it's like, yeah, whatever, you know, and, and same kind of journey, you know, I'm on, uh, you were on, you know, the, you, I get, how do they say it? The, uh, the teacher shows up when the student is ready. So that's, oh, you know, yeah. you grab that, but you're, you're on a mission to help people discover what's within them and, and grow yeah. and move forward through many different, uh, modalities and coaching. What's the best way to, to connect with you, Brenda? The best way to connect with me is you can go on my website, newdecisionsforlife.com, and you can just drop me a note from there. Um, I'm also on Instagram. Um, you can find me just at Brenda Bryson. Really uh, quick and easy that I was able to, to get that, uh, that name on Instagram when Instagram first started. Good for you. <laughs> yeah, so that was great. Um, or give me a call. Um, 
I could probably link my number into the show notes at um, it's 613-813-5683. Um, yeah, so at any which way that you want to reach out and connect with me, I'm, I'm so happy to work with people. I just, I love this work. I don't love seeing people suffer, of course. Um, I love the result on the other side of doing the work. Sure. And I love, I love just helping support people through um, such a challenging, challenging time in their lives and, and really helping them to be able to see that, um, that they have what it takes. They have the resilience. They, they're able to get through on the other side. Yeah. Challenge yeah. equals change. But one thing mm-hmm. I've learned, everything is work. Don't mean it in a negative way. But mm-hmm. you, we mentioned breath work. Do the work. I'm making plans for the weekend with friends. Even tonight. You know, going to hang with the guys haven't done in a while. What do you want to do? Where do you want to go? Who's driving? Blah, 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 blah. Guess what? <laughs> it's work. <laughs> Even though it's fun. It's, everything is work. But on the back end of it, there's good stuff there. And, and you're part of it. So, Brenda, thank you so much for joining us uh, and your story. And uh, certainly your story of resilience. Truly appreciate it. And looking forward if we get a chance to, uh, to get together again. Yeah, thanks so much, Steve. I really appreciate it. It was such an honor to speak with you today. Uh, same here. And we'll be right back. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. Hi, this is Terry Crews, actor, former football player, game show host, father of five, and all-around big dude. I'm also an expert on drama. I know all kinds of drama. There's the good kind that comes with having a house full of kids. There's the bad kind like season-ending injuries. There's the necessary kind like having an agent in Hollywood. And there's silly drama, like the drama around my percolating pectorals. And then there's the drama you can skip. Skip the drama that comes with not having your high school diploma or equivalency. Find free adult education classes near you and finish your high school diploma. Visit finishyourdiploma.org. Or text DIPLOMA to 97779. Message and data rates may apply. Reply STOP to opt out. That's Diploma to 97779. And leave the drama to actors like me. Brought to you by the Dollar General Literacy Foundation and the Ed Council.